Do you have an old Windows-based computer sitting around? Well, today I'm going to show you how to take that computer and use it as a print farm controller using OctoPrint. OctoPrint runs great standalone on a Raspberry Pi. In fact, you can run multiple instances of OctoPrint on a Pi. But you can do the same thing under Windows, and a lot of us have these Windows PCs just sitting around. Now this configuration isn't for everyone, but if you're running multiple printers and multiple Pis, it might make sense to consolidate to a larger machine. So today I'm going to walk you through the steps to get OctoPrint set up running under Python, running on Windows. Now I do recommend that you use a powered USB hub in this configuration, or at least use multiple USB ports with smaller passive hubs. But with all that said, let's see how we get all this set up. So before we even get started with this project, I'm going to go out and install RealVNC. RealVNC will give us remote access to this computer while it's setting over in the print farm, so you don't have to go to the computer to do things on it. It's really handy to have. We'll go to Try VNC Connect for free. We'll go to Downloads. Download VNC Connect. Now you will have to create an account to be able to use this because it's controlled by a cloud-based program by RealVNC, but you should be able to use five desktops for personal use for free. Downloads complete. VNC server setup, click next. We'll agree, next. You can choose whether to select the print driver or not. I'm just going to leave it default, hit next. We do need to add the exception to the firewall. Next, install. Then we'll click finish. And when the install completes, it's going to want you to sign up or sign in with your real VNC account. I'm going to uncheck send anonymous data. Click next. And I'll sign in with my email. Then it's going to want you to set a password to access this PC this new server we installed. So set a password. We'll hit apply. And now you should be done with the VNC server install. You should be able to access this with the VNC viewer. I'll show you that in a second. It's giving us a warning about the computer has sleep set. We're going to fix that as well. So hit done. And now if you come down here to the corner, you'll see that VNC is running. Now we're back to the usual computer that we use. So we need to install VNC Viewer on this computer to be able to see the new print farm computer. So we'll search for real VNC. We'll download VNC Viewer. Download button again. Downloads complete. We'll open it up. Click next. We agree. Next. Next. Install. Finish. And now we can search for VNC. Here's our VNC Viewer desktop app. And the first time that you open up VNC Viewer, it's going to have you sign in with that account that you created when you installed the VNC server. I've already done that a couple of times, and I have a couple of PCs that are on that already, so it didn't ask me. But you can see that the new desktop that we installed is right here. So we can click on that. It's connecting to our machine. We can uncheck this. It just did a quick identity check. Hit continue. And now you enter the password that you created when you set up the VNC server, the password for that new computer. You can hit remember if you like, and click OK. And this is the desktop for our PC that we're going to use in the print farm. And you can make this full screen if you like. You can come up here, and hit full screen. So since this computer is in the print farm and it's going to host OctoPrint, we don't ever want it to go to sleep, and we don't want it to go to sleep when the lid is closed because it's a laptop. We also want to do something about Windows updates, because we don't want Windows updates to reboot this thing during a print. So we need to change a few things. Let's go down to Start, go to Control Panel. We can go to Hardware and Sound, Power Options, and let's change Plan Settings. So shutting off display really doesn't bother us much, because the lid's going to be closed most of the time anyway. But if the computer should ever go to battery power, let's up this to about an hour. And then plugged in, we want to set this to Never. We can save changes. Let's go back in there and let's change advanced power settings. Turn off hard disk, we're going to set these to zero because we don't ever want it to turn it off. Same with plugged in, 20 minutes, we'll set it to zero. And then we want to come down to power buttons and lid options, lid closed action, 
we want to change these to do nothing. That way when the lid's closed, it'll still stay running. And that should be good. We can go ahead and hit apply and click OK. So we're good on power. Let's go check out Windows updates. So back to the main control panel window, we'll go to System and Security, go down to Administrative Tools, we'll go to Services, scroll all the way down to get to the Windows section, double click on Windows Update, and in the Startup type, we'll change it from Manual to Disabled. You can click Apply, and to be extra cautious, you can hit Stop to stop the current service that's running, and you should be good. You will no longer get automatic Windows updates that might restart your computer. Click OK and we can close this stuff out. Now we should be good to start the install of Octoprint. You might want to go through here and remove some stuff, uninstall a few things to make it faster, but this is a pretty new install of Windows that I'm showing you here, so we'll just get right into it. There's already a pretty complete guide on how to get this done on Windows, and that's pretty much what I'm going to follow in this tutorial with a few added steps. So the first thing from that guide that we need to do is install Python. So let's go out and download it. All these links will be in the description, of course. We're going to get 2.7 Python, and we'll come down here and just grab the Windows installer. Downloads complete. Let's click to install. Install for all users, next. Default directory, next. When it asks you what to install, you want to make sure that you install PIP, and we want to make sure that it adds the default Python location to your environment path. So it will be installed on local hard drive. This allows you to run the Python commands without knowing the fully qualified location. So click Next. Python is installed. Go ahead and hit Finish. Now we need to go get a compiler for Python. So we'll head to this link. This will take you to the compiler for Python 2.7. Hit Download. Download's complete. Let's go ahead and click on it. We'll accept, install, and the compiler install is complete. Now we need to head to Command Prompt. So let's head to Start and we'll just start typing, and we'll type in CMD for command. That should bring up command prompt, and I suggest you run this as administrator just in case, so right click on it, run as administrator. Now we're going old school. So on command line, we're gonna install the PIP virtual environment. So we're gonna do PIP space install space virtual ENV. My virtual environment's already installed. You'll probably see something a little bit different, but it probably will tell you that you need to upgrade your PIP, and you can do that if you'd like. You can just do PIP install, upgrade PIP. So the PIP upgrade is complete. Leave this window open. Let's go to File Explorer, and we need to go to C Drive, and let's create an Octoprint folder. Right-click, New, Folder. We'll just call it Octoprint. Now back to command line, we're going to change directory into that octoprint folder, so cd c colon backslash octoprint. We're going to create a new virtual environment inside this folder, so virtual env space venv. That's loaded some files inside that octoprint directory, but now we need to activate that environment. And we'll do that with a batch file, so we'll run the activate batch file from that location, venv slash scripts. Now we're in that virtual environment. We'll do a PIP install of Octoprint from the latest repository. Octoprint has been installed successfully, and now all you have to do is start the Octoprint instance. This is the direct path to start that server, and I'm going to show you why that's important in a moment. Hit Enter, and Octoprint is started and ready to go. Now you do have to keep these windows open while Octoprint is running, or it will shut down. You probably could figure out a way to run these in the background so you didn't have to do that, but I find these consoles to be useful when troubleshooting things. So we'll just leave this open and let's test it. Let's open a browser and we'll go to localhost colon 5000. That's the default port for Octoprint. Hit enter. Now I've already been through the wizard once so it didn't pop up here, but it's going to the first time you start an instance. So that's all fine and good. We have one Octoprint instance running on this PC, but we need to run multiples to run multiple printers. So we'll close this for now, and we'll close this window to shut down our server for now. So let's right click on the desktop. We'll get a new shortcut. And for the location, we're just gonna paste in that command we used to start the Octoprint server. We'll hit next, and let's just call this Octoprint1. Hit finish. So that's good, but we want to edit this so that we can start multiple instances of Octoprint. 
So let's right click on it and go to properties. And on this same line, we're going to do a dash dash host equals the IP of your print farm PC. And you can get your IP if you go to start, CMD, enter command line, and do IP config. Find the adapter that you're using. I'm using Wi Fi for this one. I'm at 192.168.1.39. So back to your shortcut. The host will be that IP address, 192.168.1.39. And then after that, we want to enter our port number. So dash dash port equals 5000. And click apply. OK. So there's our first Octoprint server, but we want to start multiples. So let's copy this shortcut and we'll just paste it here on the desktop. Let's go to properties. And all we need to do to run multiples is use a different port. So the default is 5000. Let's make this one 5001. Click apply. OK. And let's change the name of this one to Octoprint 2. Now we can start Octoprint 1 and Octoprint 2. Now when you were installing Octoprint, you probably got a message that asked you if you wanted to allow Octoprint.exe through the firewall, and you should have approved that. I didn't get it because I had installed this previously and the rule was already there. So that should put that firewall rule in place so you can get to your servers from other computers. But let's go ahead and test it on this computer just to make sure it works first. So let's open a browser and you should be able to go to your IP and port number on this PC 192.168.1.39.5000. That looks good. And now let's do 5001. That one looks good as well. So we have two instances running on this machine. So our work on the farm PC is pretty much complete, but we want to be able to access this computer from the outside, these Octoprint instances. And since you allowed that firewall when it was installing, we should be able to just access it from anywhere. So I told you earlier our IP was 192.168.1.39, and that is true, but that is a DHCP address. So that might change going down the road as your lease expires. So you have a couple of options of making that a static IP. You can either do that in Windows, or you can probably do that in your router. I'm not going to go through those steps here. I'm just going to go with this DHCP address for this tutorial. But you can go back and decide whether you want to make that static later or not. And one more time, remember that firewall rule. If you didn't get that notification to allow it, you can go inside Windows Firewall and set that up at any time. And that's pretty much it. Now we can exit this VNC viewer. And now we're back on the PC that we usually use for streaming and recording. So from here, outside the print farm machine, we should still be able to go to this 1.39.5000 port number and see our instance. And we can see it, so we know the firewall's good and we got the machine set up correctly. Let's go ahead and pull up a f the 5001, and it's working as well. Now when you log into these instances the first time, you're going to get that wizard that you can run through and set these up. I've already logged into these, so you don't see that here, but you will see that on first startup. And now comes kind of the tricky part of this setup, and that's how you tell printer from printer when multiples are plugged in, or you have them hooked up to the hub. About the only way I can tell you to do that is that each time you plug a printer in, it's going to grab a COM port. The only good part is, is that when you plug a printer in, it usually grabs the same COM port over and over. So if you plug it in and it gets COM10, if you unplug it and plug it back in, more than likely it will be COM10. Now that's not always the case, but most of the time that's going to work out. So now I'm going to hook up the print farm computer and plug a couple of printers in. Let's go to the 5000 instance and let's refresh that. I just plugged in my Ender 3. Let's log in. If you click on serial ports, you're going to see a new COM port, and that's COM9. So now I know I've only got one printer plugged in, and it's on COM9. You can leave baud rate auto for the most part, but go ahead and save and auto connect on server startup. So let's go ahead and connect up. So we're connected, terminal's looking good. Now one thing I can recommend when you're doing something like this is just keep your naming unique. So let's go to settings, we'll go to printer profile, we'll edit it, let's call it the Ender 3. 220 cubed. All the rest should be good. Let's go ahead and confirm that. And let's go to appearance. So for the title, I'm going to include the COM port on this instance because I know that this is where the Ender 3 goes and the COM port that it picked. So I'm going to say Ender 3 COM 9. And this is just to give me some reference that I have the Ender 3 plugged in and it grabbed COM 9 and it should always grab that COM port. 
and let's change the color to black and hit save. So now let's plug in our next printer and let's go to the second instance on 5001. We'll log in, hit refresh, and in the serial ports, you'll see both the new COM ports. Now this one selected COM8, so I'm going to leave baud rate auto, and this is a WANHAL duplicator 3, so I'm going to go to settings, printer profiles, add profile, we'll just call it dupe 3, set this one to 180, we can leave the rest default for now, confirm, let's go to appearance, title, we're going to call this dupe 3, COM8, again, so I know what COM port came up when I plugged them in, and let's switch this color to violet and hit save. So now over here we can select our profile, make sure we're on COM8, save the connection settings so it comes up every time, and connect. And everything's looking good in the terminal. And let's jump back to VNC so you can see what happens on the server. So here's our print farm computer, and you can see in the consoles of both the started instances of OctoPrint, it shows you when you hook up the different printers. Now back to our instance, I'm going to go unplug one of these printers just to show you what happens. So the one on COM8 is now unplugged, let's go ahead and refresh. You can see the printer's offline and we can only see the COM9 serial connection. Now if I go plug it back in, we can refresh, it goes right back to COM8 automatically and you can connect back up. And that's it, everything's configured and working and you can run as many of those instances as you want. I'm not sure how many you can run, that's kind of based on your hardware. But on a Raspberry Pi 3B+, running 4 is kind of pushing it. And I have to say the performance on the Windows version is a lot greater than on the Raspberry Pi. The web GUI comes up almost instantly. Now this configuration is not going to be for everyone. If you just have one printer, running the PC, the power that it consumes, is going to outweigh the advantages. But if you have 8 to 10 printers running, this might be the solution for you. You can also install cameras along with this configuration. And if that's something you'd like to see, please leave a comment below. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.